Then we come to chapter 12, and here we have a list of two generations of priests. Now, as we go through Nehemiah, we find that there are very numbers of uh, there are a number of places where we find lists of names. We we don't want to go through all those names, but we see one thing. This uh, in the book of Ezra and in the book of Nehemiah, we find lists of names. Now, we don't find a list of names like that in um, such a detailed list in, um, even in the Exodus, in the book of Numbers. But here is a much more detailed list with a lot of names. And this teaches us that God takes note of each individual who has wholeheartedly left Babylon and come to Jerusalem. That's what God would have us to learn from these detailed lists of names which appear to be so boring. But once we understand the spiritual significance of this movement from Babylon to Jerusalem, we find that each individual who has taken that decision to move out of Babylon to Jerusalem is taken note of by God. But he also takes note of this, that among those who have come out, some are valiant warriors, and some just come along with the crowd, and some are zealous to shoot off in thanksgiving and prayer, and some just uh, follow along. And so there is a difference, as one star differs from another star in glory, the same opportunity everybody has, but not everybody is equally zealous to do all that God wants them to do. So there's much here for our own instruction. And here there is two lists of priests. The first list is from verse 1 to 9, which is a list of the priests and Levites who came up in the first uh, movement of people from Babylon to Jerusalem in the time of Zerubbabel and Joshua. And there's a big list of priests there. And then we come to a second list of priests in verses 12 to 21. Now, when you look at verse 8, we read there in verse 8 about the, those who were in charge of the songs of thanksgiving. Those who were in charge of the songs of of thanksgiving. There again, there is a mention of those who were leading in the singing and in the praise and in that Old Testament worship of the Lord in the temple. And then in verse 9, it speaks about their brothers who stood opposite them in their service divisions, that is, who were looking after the gates. As once again, we come to these two groups of people which are repeated again. The praisers and the gatekeepers. We've seen that again and again and again in the book of Revelation. And what we read in verses 12 to 21 is another generation of priests who were at a later time. You read in verse 24, and the heads of the Levites were so and so, Hashabiah, Sherebiah, and with their brothers opposite them, again to praise and give thanks. In verse 25, a list of names who were the gatekeepers keeping watch at the storehouses of the gates. And these were the people who served in the days of verse 26 of Nehemiah and Ezra. I just want you to notice one thing here. The first list of priests is in the time of Zerubbabel, which was about 90 years before uh, Nehemiah. There was a group of priests, but among those priests, there were gatekeepers who kept the gates narrow, spiritually speaking, and praisers who had driven the spirit of timidity and lethargy far away from them and who were ready to shoot off in praise and thanksgiving and lead the people in praise and thanksgiving to God. And we see here that 90 years later, in another generation of priests and Levites, there's still mention of the praisers and the gatekeepers. The praisers and the gatekeepers are the ones that the Holy Spirit specially takes note of in Jerusalem. Those who are zealous to keep the gate narrow and those who are zealous to praise and thank the Lord at all times. And I just want to encourage every brother and sister into this ministry. All of us may not be called to gatekeeping, but all of us can be involved if we will only drive away the spirit of timidity and lethargy that clings to us like leeches we would only drive it away to be zealous to praise and thank the Lord. 
again and again and again in the book of Nehemiah we find an emphasis on this. And the praisers and the gatekeepers. The praisers and the gatekeepers. And now we come down to verse 27. Chapter 12, verse 27. Here we are told of the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem. They had completed the wall and now they wanted to dedicate that wall to the Lord. And so they called all the Levites from all their places to bring them to Jerusalem so that they might celebrate the dedication with gladness. Notice again the emphasis on hymns of thanksgiving with songs to the accompaniment of cymbals, harps and lyres. So the sons of the singers were assembled and uh, the priests and the Levites, verse 30, purified themselves. And then I had the leaders of Judah come up on top of the wall. The wall was obviously broad enough for people to walk on top of the wall. It wasn't, wasn't just a thin compound wall. It's a broad city wall on which people could walk on top. And he got these leaders up on top of the wall. And remember now, the wall is a picture of the commandments of Jesus. And here are people who have been zealous to proclaim and to do and to proclaim all the commandments of Jesus. And now... They're going to praise the Lord for it. Praise the Lord for the completion of the wall. Praise the Lord for the opportunity to do and to teach all the commandments of Jesus. And I appointed two great choirs proceeding in opposite directions around the wall and finally coming and meeting on the other side in front of the temple. Two great choirs, the first proceeding to the right. There's a list of those people who followed. And the second choir, verse 38, proceeding to the left. And they had trumpets there, we read in verse 35 and verse 36, many musical instruments, the musical instruments that David had introduced into the temple. And Ezra, the Bible teacher, went in front of them. And then the two choirs finally took their stand, verse 40, in the house of God. And the priests, verse 41, with their trumpets, and it says here, on that day, and the singers sang, verse 42, and on that day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced because God had given them great joy. It says here in verse 42, the last part, in the margin it says, they caused their voices to be heard, the singers. That's a very good expression. It's possible to sing in a meeting without causing our voice to be heard. In fact, most believers who sit in meetings often sing like that. You can't hear their voice. But the Spirit of God takes note of the fact of people who caused their voice to be heard. That's a good example to follow. That when we sing, we cause our voice to be heard. They were loud in their singing and they praised the Lord. And they offered sacrifices because God had given them great joy. In Jerusalem... God had given them great joy, even though Jerusalem was not as grand as it was in the days of Solomon, the joy was still the same. Wonderful. And even the women and the children, a special note there, the Holy Spirit is made of the sisters and the children also, just in case they feel that that's not for us. No, they also rejoiced. And they praised the Lord so loud that the joy of Jerusalem was heard from afar. An excellent example for all of us to follow, brothers and sisters, men, women, and children. That we can praise the Lord with loud voices, causing our voice to be heard when we sing and when we pray. That the joy of Jerusalem can be heard from afar. It says God gave them great joy. It wasn't a self-produced thing. God had given them. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And then... In verse 44 to 47, it speaks about their setting apart money for the Levites who served in the temple. They praised the Lord and they also gave contributions to the Levites who were in financial need. Now when you turn to the New Testament, in Hebrews chapter 13, it says there are two types of sacrifices that God is pleased with. And it's important for us always to keep in mind the two types of sacrifices. Of course, we know Romans 12.1 that we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. 
But here it also says about two sacrifices that are to come forth from us in addition to the offering up of our bodies. Hebrews 13.15 Let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that give thanks to his name. God calls every one of his children in Jerusalem to offer to the Lord, how often? Continually. A sacrifice of praise. Not just praise, but a sacrifice of praise. That means to praise God even when I don't feel like it. There are a lot of people who will praise God only when they feel like it. There is no sacrifice of praise there. A sacrifice of praise is when I don't feel like it. It makes no difference because I don't live by feeling in any case. God is still on the throne. He's worthy to be praised. Whether I feel like it this morning or not, I'm going to praise the Lord. That is a sacrifice of praise. But if I make God wait for my feelings, then I have not understood how to offer a sacrifice of praise to God. It's got nothing to do with my circumstances or my feelings. But Lord, I will praise you. A sacrifice of praise continually, and that must come from our lips. You see, just in case we think it's only something we do in the heart, silently praise God. No, it says the fruit of lips that give thanks to his name. It's a very important thing. In fact, it says here that we are to go outside the camp. Verse 13. Outside the camp, outside that Babylonian system. And when we come outside the camp, we are to continually offer up a sacrifice of praise. And the second sacrifice we are to offer to God is mentioned in verse 16. And that is to share our material things with others who are in need. Do not neglect to do good and to share with others who are in need because God is pleased with such sacrifices. So those are the two things that we see in Nehemiah chapter 12. We saw them praising the Lord. All of them were praising. I'm sure they didn't all feel like it, but they still praised the Lord. And they were in the Old Testament, remember. And that's really something that can put us to shame. How they praised the Lord. And then we see how they had a concern for the Levites among them who were in need. They gave contributions and they appointed people to gather the tithes so that the Levites could be supported.